How's it going everyone? So today I thought it would be really fun to do a follow along hip mobility, mobilizations for the hips. Oftentimes the hips get super tight and that can lead to a lot of potential knee injuries. So it is really important for you to keep your hips mobilized, not super loose, which is uncommon, but mobilized. So let's do it. So we can start off first with hip circles. These are really easy to do. Um, so <laughs> we're just gonna take our beautiful charged hands and place them right on the lower back, right above the hip bones here. The feet and the toes are gonna be facing forward and the knees are going to be slightly bent. From here, we're gonna shift forward at the hips and create nice, beautiful circles all the way down and all the way up. And we'll do five going in one direction and five going in the opposite direction. on the kidney. Oftentimes when we have low back pain, we could be needing more water. We might be emotionally uh, worried about something. Let's go in the opposite direction now. So remember, your kidneys hold the energy of like anxiety. So we need to connect to the spirit of the kidneys. Very important organs. Don't shy away from certain areas. Go right into it. When you feel a sticky spot, go into it. Be gentle, be loving, be happy, and release it with your mind. Set that connection. Good. Right now I have a little bit more of a lower back pain in the QL, which is this big muscle right here and the lower back and it connects to the hip and it'll also cause a hip hike. So it'll make the hip shift up. And then again, that creates more compensation and then we're more likely to get injured. If we're going on a run, walk, whatever it might be, maybe we decide to do a different sport and it could potentially. All right, so we're gonna go into the hip flexors. Actually, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee too. get into the hip flexor stretch. This is one of my favorites. A lot of people don't know how to properly stretch the hip flexors, specifically the psoas and the quadriceps. And those are generally very tight. The general rule of thumb is if you can get your heel to your glutes. Right now, I'm quite a bit away. Um, So tight quads, not extreme, but tight. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, let's get into the hip flexor stretch. This is one of my favorites. A lot of people don't know how to properly stretch the hip flexors, specifically the psoas and the quadriceps. And those are generally very tight. The general rule of thumb is if you can get your heel to your glutes. Right now, I'm quite a bit away. Um, so tight quads, 
not extreme, but tight. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to connect to the core while we stretch. That's important. Just because we're stretching doesn't mean that we have to let go of our core connection. The core is a stabilizer for the spine. If we don't connect to our deep intrinsic stabilizers of our spine, we're gonna be more likely to injure our spine because all the force that we're generating if we're lifting weights is gonna, instead of going and being um, dispersed into the earth, it's gonna go right into your spine. So it's important for us to know how to use our core correctly and then we will feel more confident when we've got a bar on our back or if we're hiking with a heavy load, whatever it might be, you'll feel a lot more stable. So let's get into the hip flexor stretch. We're going to draw the belly button in towards the spine and that again anchors the low back. So we're wrapping 360 degrees of strong, deep muscle. And from there, we're going to tuck the tailbone under. So if you are someone that feels tight, so tight hip flexors all in here, you're more likely going to be into this position in your back. And that's gonna put a lot of pain in the low back. So we're gonna draw the belly button in Squeeze the glute and pull the tailbone down. From here, you can go into a, that pulling position, sort of pushing forward at the hip flexor, and I can feel a nice, beautiful pull there. And we'll hold that position for just three to five second, seconds since we're just mobilizing. So let's go again. Tighten your belly, push forward at the hip, and back. Good, four, good, and five. Let's get to that QL. So the quadratus lumborum, again, is right here, that uh, low back, and we have two on each side. So what we're gonna do is pretty much a very specific, same thing, but we're gonna position our stretch differently so we can hit that QL. So we're going to draw the belly button in, pull the tailbone down, and instead of shifting forward at the hip flexor, we're going to sort of continue that rounded spine in the low back position, and I'm going to bring my arm up and come over, side flex over to the right side. So instead of coming back to get a nice hip flexor stretch, which you can do that to get a deeper hip flexor stretch. So if I'm going hip flexor, I side flex and I push forward at my hip as I side flex, I can really feel it in the anterior part of my body. But if I wanna feel it in my low back, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna come forward, forward in this lateral rotation. And that's gonna get a nice release there. Again, we're just holding the position for three to five seconds. Anchor it down. Good, let's do the other side. Hip flexors first. Squeeze your glute, belly button's tight. I'm gonna go ahead and go right into that side flexion. Release. Pushing forward, see the difference. Three, four, one more, five. Now let's go QL. My right side's the one that's calling more, um, but we're gonna hit this QL as well. So again, same thing, so I'm gonna come forward. Breathing, keep releasing this top. 
coccyx out of your breath and relax. Perfect. Okay, so we got a little bit of back, a little bit of anterior. So now let's hit the quad. <laughs> so same thing with the quad stretch. We can go into a kneeling position. This one's going to be a little bit harder because most of the time we're not able to, one, we don't have the balance. If you don't have good balance, you're probably going to be like wobbling all over the place when you try this one, but I'll show it to you. Just roll this up a bit. So same thing, belly button's tight. I'm going to go ahead and reach, grab my ankle and contract the quadricep muscles. Hold that position and release. Now, if that is impossible for you to do, you'll go, you can assist yourself by being next to a couch, a wall. You can have a stick or a pole. And then if you can't reach behind you, you can take a Swiss ball or you can use your couch or you can use a wall. So I'm gonna take my Swiss ball and do the same thing. Now again, if you don't have a Swiss ball, just simply use the wall or use a couch. Hold that position, actively contract the quad muscles, the quadricep muscles, hold, and then release. Let's go, let's go again. Let it go. Let's do the opposite side. And let it go. Again. release and then go back into the contraction let's do it again release the quad relax the quad and then pull the belly button in contract the quad now I'm flexing the quad and stretching it and then release is a really important mobilization for your hips and we're going to go into a 90 90 position so from here i have a 90 degree angle in my back leg and a 90 degree angle in the front it is really important. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a small curvature in your low back. Let's say you are someone that has a tight low back. You might be stuck in a flexed position, right? Because your hamstrings are so tight, which also means that your glutes are most likely tight. This is very common for someone that sits most of the day but also likes to work out. So we might have really tight hamstrings and really tight glutes, and then also a little bit of tight hip flexors as well from being in that flexed hip position for long periods of time. So we need to make sure that you have a small curvature in your low back. I do not want it to be flat here, okay? So you need to have kind of stick the glutes out and then what we're going to do from here is we're going to do our best to keep our hips forward so we're not shifted this way 
okay? I'm shifted here. And then I'm gonna bring my chest to my knee. My opposite hand is gonna be on the outside of my body. And I'm just gonna come down. I like to place my opposite hand on my ankle here. And I'm gonna keep a nice neutral spine. So I'm not gonna bring my head up like this. And I'm not gonna round my back like this. Do not do that. Here we go. Hold. And release. One. Hold it. And release. So we're going chest to knee. One more time. Good. From here, we're going to continue mobilizing the hips. You can place your hands behind you, and we're going to go into external hip rotation. That was tight. And then you can go into internal hip rotation by bringing this back foot up. This one's going to be hard, especially if you have a tight QL, but we'll be here. Hold, release. So I'm bringing my back foot up like this. I'm pressing this knee into the mat. This leg's like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you have no right to do this right now. Ugh. Okay, let's go again. So external hip rotation, internal hip rotation. External, this knee needs to stay down. Internal. So let's get into a little flow with this. We start to kind of connect to our body and start to really feel what's happening and get into a more happy, joyful state of being. So we're here, we're gonna go down. Let's go three times. I like to twist my spine, come back down. Opposite side. 
tight low back, like right above the hip bone here. One, obviously massage it, um, try to like pull out the tension, but you also need to uh, fix your patterns when you're doing any sort of training. If the low back is overactive, then it means that it's constantly being recruited by your nervous system to stabilize, which means that your core isn't stabilizing correctly and you're, you have a faulty recruitment pattern when it comes to glute, hamstring, and then contralateral lower back or opposite side low back. So these are the lateral systems or AKA the sling systems of the body. And we're talking primarily um, the posterior chain. So this is gonna come into play when you're going upstairs, um, walking, running. We have this natural ability to twist our spine and to twist our body from side to side. So when you need to connect yourself, glute, hamstring, and then IQL. So that's the pattern of movement. So you need to think about when you're doing any sort of lift, you can practice while doing some glute bridges, single leg glute bridges, Think of yourself connecting to the glute muscle, the hamstring muscle, and then the opposite side of the lower back. The low back is super tight. There's a lot of tension. Again, that's gonna connect to worrying, emotional responses of the kidneys, and then also can be a faulty recruitment pattern of your glutes. So I'm gonna leave it there with just these simple mobilizations for the hips, and I hope this helps. Comment if you like it, comment if you have any more requests, feedback, much love.